Hey, deserving listeners, it's time to continue watching Framing Britney Spears. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. I'm going to react to this show, and let's see if anything of interest comes out of my face. The internet is just burning this morning. It. Yes. Britney Spears. She's bald. She came in and she said she wanted her head shaved. The hairdresser refused, so she literally grabbed her the hair clipper and started doing it herself. So I remember this news story being all the talk. And it's just quaint to think about, given our current political and news climate, that this was news back then. A famous woman changes her hairstyle. <laughs> like, who cares? That's how I see it now. It's like, is it okay for someone to shave their head? Uh, is it is it so weird? Now I get it, because Britney Spears, she comes across as a very girly girl with long hair. Can't, can't we just say, well, she wanted to shave her head, big deal. She looks like she's having fun. Now, I don't know, maybe this is leading to something where she actually has an, a psychiatric episode, I don't know. She actually might be trying to strike out against her fame and against the paparazzi. This might be a big middle finger to all the people who see her in a certain way and want her to be a certain kind of person and want her to be constantly on camera. This might be her way of making herself look odd or, or different or not what they hope to see so that maybe they'll go away or maybe they will you know, get some distance or maybe they'll just forget about her or maybe they'll be like, okay, you think, or, and another thing is that when you treat someone like a certain way, then oftentimes we, we have two choices, like say a child that's more common, that you have a child who is treated like they're incompetent and they don't know what they're doing and they're a bad kid. So maybe that's a better uh, way to say it is when you treat a kid like they're a bad kid and they're not a bad kid. They're treating a kid like they're a bad kid. The parents are treating that way. The siblings are treating the kid that way. The teachers are treating the kid that way. And the kid is not a bad kid. And the kid has two choices. They can either continue to push back on that, say, no, I'm good, no, I'm good, no, I'm good. Or they can just say, screw it, okay, fine, I'm bad. And uh, no, either option is not good for the person because if they keep pushing back and saying, no, I'm good, they keep getting rejected. I'm good, no, you're not, I'm good, no, I'm not. Look at me, I'm doing something good, no, you're not. Or you can say, fine, I give in, fine, I'm, I'm a bad kid. And when you make that switch, you're inviting a bunch of negative attention because you're acting quote unquote bad, but at least you're in power of the situation. At least you can say to yourself at the end of the day, I have power over my life. The reason why I got all that negative attention is because I chose to act like a bad kid. The other possibility that I s imagine might be true here is that this is a big middle finger to society. That she's saying, you know what? I've been trying to get you to like me like the way you used to, and I can't do anything right. Everything that I do, you see me as either a slut or a cheater or a bad mom or an incompetent mom or a stupid person or, you know, no matter what I do, you will determine that I'm a bad, evil, incompetent person and that I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough to be treated the way other celebrities are treated. So fine, screw you guys, I'm cutting my hair. She came in and she said she wanted her head shaved. The hairdresser refused, so she literally grabbed her, the hair clipper and started doing it herself. And she said, I don't want anyone touching me. I'm tired of everybody touching me. So that's kind of interesting. She says, I'm tired of everyone touching me. And that lends itself to what I was saying earlier, which is the trauma of having pressing bodies aggressively trying to get pieces of you emotionally and physically. So it just makes me wonder if, if that's the main reason why she did this. Who knows? But the other thing we have to uh, think about here is that I remember a lot of talk about this, and I was a therapist during this time. I don't think I had a podcast yet, but there was a lot of talk of like, oh, she's mentally ill. And I remember thinking at the time, do we know that she has a mental illness or are we basing this on the fact that she shaved her head and that she's not acting like the sweet little girl that she no longer is? <laughs> is that what we're saying? Because she shaved her head, she snapped and she's mentally ill because people shave their heads all the time. And 
people in society do this, do this frequently, where they'll look at one behavior in a famous person and they'll say, oh, they have a mental illness. And I'm here to tell you that the assessment of mental disorders is very complicated. That's why we go to graduate school for so many years and spend so many tens of thousands of dollars getting that degree, because it's very complicated. And just looking at someone's behavior, i.e. shaving their head and concluding a mental illness from that is uh, absurd. So now maybe we'll see more behaviors that will help us out here. But I remember at the time thinking, I don't think people know enough about the situation to be making conclusions. It's so easy, it's so much fun to take a celebrity who's a young, beautiful, talented girl and rip her to shreds. It was so cold, Britney Spears had chapped head. Now, is she suffering from a mental illness? Is she suffering from something? It could be. But the fact that she shaved her head might not be related to that. You can have PTSD and just decide to give an F you to the paparazzi by shaving your head. Hopefully we'll get more detail. The idea that people could look at that and only see a crazy person well, just, that just tells me that, you know, what a, what a vulturous society she was working with to begin with. Yeah, and I want to point out a statistic that 50% of Americans at some point in their life, they will suffer from a full-blown mental disorder. So let that sink in for a second. Half of those living in the United States at some point in their life will suffer from an ongoing mental disorder that is diagnosable in the DSM. And the other half, in my opinion, gets close to the threshold. So when we're talking about someone that suffers from a mental disorder, we're literally talking about half of Americans at some point in their life. And I believe that the statistic at any given point is a third of Americans suffer from a mental disorder. So when we're talking about someone who suffers from a mental condition, we're talking about at any given point, a third of all Americans. And throughout the lifespan, we're talking about half of Americans. And it, I would argue that the other half it, it gets close to the threshold at some point. So we really just have to uncouple these things with like, oh, she's acting crazy. Ooh, mental disorder. No, people have mental conditions frequently and they work at the accounting office and some of them are famous people. Some of them are podcasters and they have a YouTube channel. All walks of life doing all sorts of functional things, people suffering from disorders. You can even have something like a psychotic disorder and like schizophrenia and be well medicated and well supported and live a totally functional life. And we really just have to grow up as a society and stop seeing someone going, oh, they're acting crazy. They have a mental illness. It's really just a, what I consider to be an adolescent way of looking at human nature, really. When she went through this and she shaved her head and everyone's like, oh, she's going crazy. It's like, you know, let's, let's grow up. Now, as I've been saying, <laughs> there's a possibility that she legitimately suffered from a mental disorder during this time. So I'm not saying that she didn't. In fact, again, because half of Americans at some point in their life will suffer from something, Britney Spears, as an American, she has a one in two chance of suffering from a mental disorder at some point in her life. It wouldn't be strange to me if she did suffer from something, but I don't know, just the way people talk about it, it's just, again, seems adolescent to me. And no offense to the teenagers watching out there. The kids meant the world to Britney and she wanted to see her kids. And Kevin said, no. We went to a gas station. She was with her cousin, Allie. I looked at Britney from the windshield and I was videotaping her and I said, how, how are you doing? You doing okay? concerned about you though. So from the details they're giving us, she was going through a divorce with Kevin Federline and she has two children and Kevin Federline has the children and Brittany is trying to see her children. Okay. So we can imagine any parent being extremely stressed out in a situation like that where you're like, I really want to see my kids. I'm not being allowed to see my kids. Am, am I going to see my kids? I miss my kids. I wonder if they're okay. Are they safe? All these questions. We could imagine being very stressed out. And then the paparazzi descends. Okay. And how many pictures do you need? 
Like, <laughs> you know, take one picture and move on with your life. Why the constant <laughs> taking of the pictures with the flashes? It's maddening. We go back to Kevin Featherline's house. She buzzes the door again. He doesn't open the gate. Well, now she's upset. I go to the car. I tell Brittany, hey, Brittany, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions, and then I'm going to leave you alone. So this guy's acting like he's innocent. He knows the situation. Now, he's not breaking the law technically, so I guess you could say that. But the way he's telling this story, he's like, look, I was just going up and asking this question. Come on. Like, you know she's in an extremely difficult situation. Why even go over to the car? Why take a picture at all? Do you not have pictures of her? Why do you need pictures of her in this moment when she's going through some? Have a heart, people. And Allie's coming up to me, and she's like, guys, please, please. Oh, please, guys. No, guys, please, please, guys. And Brittany just grabbed the umbrella, started coming after me, and starts beating the passenger side of my truck. Yeah, so this is what I remember. So I can imagine, now again, this is, you know, confirmation. She's crazy. I just got done saying that a long time ago, if I was Brittany, I would have done something like this. I don't know if I would have done this particular thing. I probably would have punched someone in the face. It's just kind of the urges that I have in situations like that. Who knows? Again, she could be suffering from something in this moment. But, oh, she shaved her head. Oh, she's fed up with the paparazzi at one of her most difficult emotional moments in her life that anyone can relate to. Big deal. That night was not a good night for her. And when Amanda does this, I just want to point out, they don't think it's mental illness. They think, I mean, maybe with Kanye, they think it's mental illness. But, you know, didn't... Uh, Alec Baldwin haul off and hit someone. When a man does this, it's like, oh, he had enough. You know, you were getting in his face and the man, he had enough. But when a woman does this, like, oh, she's going crazy. And this goes back centuries. We called this hysteria back in the old days. Women get, my dog is barking. Because my dog understands the sexism in our society. Um, and he's a good boy for that. <laughs> we have been labeling people, including people in my industry, for example, a very common scenario was you would have a woman in the 60s and 70s who was suffering from massive amounts of sexism, wasn't allowed to work, wasn't allowed to go to school, wasn't allowed a voice, had to put up with misogyny and being mistreated by men in the patriarchy. And they would get upset. They would get sad. They would get angry. And when that happened, not all the time, but a lot of time, those women would be labeled as hysterical and they'd be put on early benzodiazepines as a way of calming them down. This is where Mother's Little Helper comes in, if you've heard that. Rolling Stones has a song called Mother's Little Helper. And we have a pattern of that, of infantilizing women and saying, oh, women and their emotions, they're crazy, they're hysterical. But when men have emotions, it's, it's okay, it's legitimate, it makes sense. Again, we just have we can't look at the Britney story and the way that society and the paparazzi saw this and not see the misogyny and the sexism and the oppression of women regarding their emotions. When women act, you know, another thing that you'll see people do is like, oh, she's angry, she's on her period. You'll hear that. Instead of saying, I wonder if this person has a legitimate thing that they're angry about. How about that? It's not a good night for us, man. Oh my God. <laughs> But it was a good night for us because it was a money shot. But it was a good night for us because it was a money shot. I guess I bet you this guy could retire off pressing her at her worst moment and breaking her down so that she acted out in a way that I'm not condoning the violence. I'm not I'm not saying I should punch paparazzi if they get in my face. I'm just saying it's reasonable. <laughs> It's a reasonable reaction under the circumstances. Yikes. That this is just a whole lot of yikes. Do you think the paparazzi being around affected her at all? I, I don't really think, and I don't really believe because, you know, working on her for so many years, she never gave a clue or information to us 
that I don't appreciate you guys. Leave me the F alone. How about literally that night as they're telling you, leave us alone? How about that? So <laughs> he's, he's like, I never got an indication. Now, he's probably a good person and he's trying to do what he considers to be his occupation. But humans have a very good ability of going into denial and compartmentalizing and justifying things to themselves. Literally that night, her and her friend were saying, will you please leave us alone? And he just got done saying, I never got an indication. Come on. What about when she said, leave me alone? There were times where she like, can you leave me alone for the day? But it wasn't like, leave me alone forever. You know what I mean? <laughs> wow. And, you know, I'll tell you this story. I was in LA and just walking down this random street and there's these two vans with the doors open. So I look in and I see a bunch of people and I get this really ominous evil feeling. There was this very evil vibe. I don't know if evil is the right word, unsafe vibe that I was getting from all these people crammed in this van. And then I, I, I go up to the next van and I see the same thing. I see all these people crammed in there. I'm just like, something is really creeping me out about these people. And then I go a little further and I realized, oh, they all had cameras. Oh, I bet you that's paparazzi. We're in Los Angeles, it must be the paparazzi. And I thought, I felt a evil vibe from that crowd of people. It is, in some respects, I don't wanna say an evil profession, an unethical profession, a profession of greed and of trying to capitalize on human suffering. Not always, of course. There are a lot of paparazzi who get, you know, a nice picture of someone and they sell that too. But you just have to wonder about the sort of people that are attracted to that kind of job. I mean, you couldn't pay me enough money to do this. I would feel too bad. I'd just be cringing as I was walking up like, oh, can I take your picture? And, and you just wonder about the sort of person that's attracted to that. Now, I don't want to indict an entire industry. I know more than to say something like that. Not only just because I don't want to get sued, but also because I don't know anything about that. There would have to be a study of all the paparazzi, what kind of personality profiles. But I wouldn't doubt that at least when they get together, they benefit from a certain mindset of it's us against them. And we're in it for the money and for the shot. And we're going to do anything we can to make money today. At the very least, it's a, maybe a culture that supports an almost psychopathic way of looking at human beings with that lacks empathy. The shaving of the head, the umbrella scene with a paparazzi, stints in rehab where she blames you for that and your relationship with her begins to dissolve. What is happening to your family? All right, well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Tune in next time when we continue with the show. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.